Funding for this series is made possible in part by the Donna J. and Charles T. Cole Charitable Foundation and by the Department of Geological Sciences at Central Washington University. Hi, I'm Nick, and I love Washington's geology. I've been teaching it for 20 years now. Let's hit the highways, visit places you all know, and I can help you see Washington like you've never seen Washington before. Welcome to Central Rocks, Roadside Geology. Here we are. You know that scene, don't you? Vantage Washington, where Interstate 90 crosses the Columbia River. The spectacular bridge crossing the Columbia. Lots of folks have crossed that bridge. How many people know that this area was under a lot of Ice Age floods water? 15,000 years ago, eastern Washington was dramatically altered by tremendous floods of meltwater from Montana. The floods ripped up much of this landscape, leaving gashes in the earth called coulees. Often overlooked in the Ice Age flood story, tales of enormous, temporary, freshwater lakes that dominated eastern Washington time and again as the frigid floodwater pooled in local basins, patiently waiting to drain through the Cascades and out to sea. Here we are along the Columbia River itself, downstream of Frenchman Cooley, upstream of the little town of Vantage, Washington. Really nice shot across the river to look at a couple of things. Number one, the vertical nature of that wall, that tells us Ice Age flood erosion. But maybe more spectacularly here, we can imagine how deep the water was especially when we had a temporary lake here. Glacial Lake Lewis was the result of water backing up from the Tri-Cities all the way up to this country. And we have great evidence to suggest that that water in that Glacial Lake Lewis was deep enough to bury everything that you see. Everything you see was understanding water multiple times. Okay, how do we know that? What evidence do we have for an Ice Age lake here in the desert? The answer, erratics. Ice Age flood erratics. Rocks, big and small, that are strewn over this familiar landscape in central Washington. The key point, erratics are misplaced, oversized rocks. Rocks that don't match the underlying regional bedrock of the area. So what is the local bedrock of the area? Let's head just a mile upriver to Frenchman Springs Coulee, where the floods cut deeply into our bedrock. Classic Central Washington geology here. Not only the Ice Age flood story that we've been talking about today, but, but the local bedrock, which is uh, world famous, really. World famous because it's, it's unusual. Let's figure out what kind of rock we've got, first of all, and then I'll try to convince you that it's an unusual story. We've got rock here, and the rock that I find here and break open is the same stuff we've got on those cliffs behind me. In fact, we can go 100 miles in all directions from here and have the same type of rock, this dark-colored, layered rock. All right, what do we got here? Well, I'm noticing spectacular holes in all of this stuff. The holes are gas bubbles, they're vesicles. Uh, this is lava rock. This is a special kind of lava rock called basalt, which is usually found in the ocean floors. This is not an ocean floor. This is central Washington. So there's a whole story to why we have basalt lava rock here in central Washington. That's a story for another day. The point is, the bedrock of this region and the dominant bedrock that was hit hard by these Ice Age floods, basalt. If we look carefully, it's igneous rock. It's actually got uh, sparkly, random, arranged minerals 
beautiful Plaju clay spars here. It's the kind of stuff we find in Hawaii. This is not Hawaii. The salt. So if darn near all eastern Washington's bedrock is this black-colored basalt, then there must be a pretty good story to explain all of these light-colored, loose rocks that litter the local landscape. How did they get here? The Ice Age floods. Nice quartzite. How far did the floods carry them? The closest granite bedrock is at Grand Coulee Dam, a hundred miles north of here. And metamorphic bedrock is farther away than that. After mapping all of the coulees, flood bars, and erratics across eastern Washington, geologists are now sure that the Ice Age floodwaters washed these rocks into our area. Much larger erratics pose a more difficult question. Could the floodwaters really move house-sized rocks? The answer, the monster rocks were rafted in on icebergs, chunks of glacial ice from the north. When the iceberg came to rest in quiet water at the margin of Lake Lewis, the big rocks got dropped high above the ancient lake floor as the iceberg is stranded. Well, 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 look what we have here. Classic erratic from the Ice Age floods. Now, this bad boy is 100% granite, tens of millions of years old. Remember now, the local bedrock is nothing but basalt, which is this very dark colored, fine grained igneous rock, lava flow rock. This thing sticks out like a sore thumb. We're just, we're just a mile from the Columbia River, where the Ice Age floods did their thing. And all this land was, this is desert, right? This is sage and rattlesnake country. But back 15,000 years ago, there was a significant lake here, Glacial Lake Lewis. This granite boulder rafted in on an iceberg and got perched here on the side of this hillside. If we look at the crystals here, nothing but beautiful minerals inside. This thing has been sitting here for 15,000 years. The exact elevation of this particular erratic, 1,263 feet above sea level, that's 1263. The Columbia River down there is about 1,000 feet, so we're good 263 feet above river level, so that lake was at least 263 feet of water, vertical stack of water. Erratic. Careful field mapping of the flood erratics in the Vantage area has concluded that the maximum depth of Glacial Lake Lewis was 783 feet deep. That's almost 200 feet deeper than the height of Seattle's Space Needle. The lake, which covered an estimated 3,000 square miles of central Washington, formed many times. Each time a flood came from the north, the Pasco Basin was filled like a retention pond as the water slowly squeezed through Wallula Gap down by the Tri-Cities. Lots of terrific evidence for Ice Age floods activity. Let's recap it real quick. We've got glacial erratics all over the ground, rocks, granite metamorphic rocks that were brought in by the Ice Age floods. Those are deposits. We've also got further upstream, Frenchman Coulee itself, the dramatic box-shaped coulee that shows us exactly where the floodwaters traveled and where they ripped up the ground. Combine that together with some of these over-steepened cliffs on both sides of the Columbia River and these whole collection of flood-deposited rocks called flood bars, put it all together and you've got a beautiful case 
for a tremendously dramatic story, the Ice Age floods coming through South Central Washington. Funding for this series is made possible in part by the Donna J. and Charles T. Cole Charitable Foundation and by the Department of Geological Sciences at Central Washington University.